Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday night worship service. It is our first official Wednesday night of Lent. And my name is Vicar Daphne, and I am so excited that you are joining with me tonight for this worship service. Let's begin with the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come on, welcome to worship. Let's bring God here with us. And please, if you will join me in our opening litany, we begin now. Gentle God, we have traveled through many waters to reach this place, but share one baptism. God in community, we arrive from different backgrounds and traditions, yet share one faith. Holy One, we are, each of us, unique and precious to God and are members of one body. God of all, we have different dreams and doubts, yet our hearts beat with one hope. Almighty One, we are graced with different gifts, so we may offer them in service to one Lord. Equip us for the work of ministry as we worship and pray together with one voice. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world and for the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all. Let us pray to Let us calm our minds and focus in and think about a confession. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn to us again, to you, and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. God, and by God's authority, he declares to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God in the Thank you. 
join me now in the prayer of the day. May we live a life worthy of the calling we have received. Like Paul, may we be the ones who urge others to live this way as well. May we be completely humble and gentle. Help us to be patient, bearing with others in love. May we make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Amen. Hello everyone, I am Vicar Daphne and I am so excited that you have come to join me for children's time. Um, so in preparation, so come on, come closer to the screen, a little closer. We are here today to talk about unity and being one with our Lord and um, also just how one person plus one per person plus one person equals many people which make up God's church, right? Because God's church is, is it a building? No, it isn't. It is not a building. God's church is made up of the people, and the people like to be in a building. Now, I was thinking about finger plays, and I thought of one that I haven't done since I was a kid, and I thought I could do it for you, and then we could do it together. You put your hands together like this. Here is the church. Here's the steeple. We open the door, and we see all the people. Okay, now let's do it together. All right, we put them together like this. Here's the church. Here's the steeple open the doors, and see all the people, right? So some churches have a steeple, some don't, but all churches are made of people, right? Because God's church is and are the people, not the building. Are you a child of God? You are, and I am too. This baby we can pretend is real, we can pretend this baby is also a child of God. Baby dolls usually aren't, but we are going to pretend today. So all children, all people are God's children, and we are all part of God's family. And we are all part of God's church. And God has given all of us many gifts. Our last part of the scripture says, but each of us was given grace according to measure of Christ's gift. Christ's gift one of the biggest gifts Christ has ever given us is the gift of life, right? And we have so many gifts that God has given us as individuals that we can share with one another. If we were all the same, life would be pretty boring because we'd all be doing the same things all the time. But luckily, we're all different, and we have so many different um, likes and interests and opportunities given to us and we have so much to offer the church and to each other. So let's pretend this baby doll I have here that my child let me borrow for today is a real baby. Even though babies cannot talk yet, they still have the gifts of God in them. And the first two, when they're just born, that we can focus in on is the gift of laughter and the gift of smiles that a baby can give to us, right? So we'll, this little one is smiling up at me, and I am so excited that this baby has shared the gift of a smile with me. Now, as these babies grow older, they get to learn about other gifts that God has given them, and then they can share those gifts with others. But for now, as a baby... They give smiles and they give laughter to those around them. I also have some gifts. I wrote a little paper here. There's a present on it. And I titled it, Vicar Daphne's Gifts. So I have lots of gifts that God has given me, but I'm sharing four with you today. 
One is, I also can give the gift of smiles. I love to smile at people and share that with others. And I also give the gift of hope and positivity wherever I go. I really enjoy being hopeful and um, sharing that hope with others. I also really enjoy conversations with people. I give the gift of conversation either one-on-one -on -one with somebody or in a group. I prefer a conversation with a cup of coffee, but it doesn't have to be that way. Conversation in any shape or form I really enjoy, and I love to give that gift to others. And the last gift I put on here is I really enjoy tennis. It's my favorite sport. So I enjoy playing it, and I love watching people play it. So if at any time you see me in the summer and you want to play some tennis or talk about tennis, I am up for it. So now, for those of you watching, I have some homework for you. I want you to think about what your gift from God is. We all have many gifts, but your job, your homework, is to think of one gift to share with me. So either email me, call me, stop in at some point when we're able, um, call the church, email, whatever, Facebook me, however way, in some way, shape, or form. Contact me with one gift that God has given you. And I have four little spots here, and I have many, many of these papers. And what I would love to do in the future is fill these in, and then in a future children's sermon, Share your gifts with the congregation so that we know what gifts people have here at this church to share with the world. I can share your name if you want me to, but I don't have to. I can make it anonymous too. You can tell me. You don't have to be a child. You can be between the ages of 0 and 115, whatever. It doesn't matter what age. But your homework is to share with me. Contact me somehow with one gift God has given you so that we can share them together in the future with everyone here. Let's pray. Come on, fold your little hands. Here we go. Dear God, thank you so much for sharing your gift of life with us. We are so thankful to be a part of your family, and we are so thankful that church is not just a building, but it's all of us together as a family. Amen. Welcome to Offering and Announcements time. First of all, I just want to remind you that during the children's time, there was a little bit of homework. So please contact me with your gift that God has given you. I am so excited to receive those and then share them in the future with you guys. Our offering opportunities here at Calvary are um, threefold. First of all, you're welcome to go onto the website and find the offering symbol. It should be on almost every page, if not every page, and you can click on it and deposit your offer offering to the church that way. Another way, of course, is to drive on over here and drop it off. With um, There's a box in the back by the preschool door. You can um, do that. And the third option is to mail it in to Calvary. So, and also the fourth way is um, our drive-in worship. This is also an announcement here. Our drive-in worship this Sunday is right here at Calvary at 1 p.m. So you can also, at that time, bring your offering with you and give it to somebody at the drive-in worship. That would work great too. Another announcement is that our annual meeting has been rescheduled it is now going to be a virtual annual meeting on Zoom, and it's going to be on Sunday, March 7th at 10 a.m. So please come and join us online for the annual meeting on March 7th. This is still February, and our second offering partner is still Connect with a Child. The Hakuna Matata Children's Choir came a couple years ago and gifted us with their music and dance, and we are um, helping raise money for them. Our goal is to raise $2,500. We have some money towards that, but we don't, we're not at to the gold yet. So please provide us with some offering so that we can gift it to them. 
And the last announcement today is that I want you to think of a Lenten discipline. This is still pretty much the beginning of Lent. So if you haven't started a Lenten discipline, now is the time to do that. There are so many options, which I will talk about again in a little while. So just kind of think about that. And if you have one and you want to share it with us here at Calvary, we would love to hear what you have decided to do. Now for our offering song. All that we have and all that we offer comes from a heart both frightened and free. Take what we First reading today is Psalm 133. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing life forevermore. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Save us as you promised, we will trust your word. Our scripture of the day is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to leave, lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. This ends the reading. Don't be fooled by me. Don't be fooled by the face you see. This is not my face. This is merely a mask. I wear a thousand masks, masks that I am afraid to take off because none of them are truly me. You see, 
Pretending is an art that is second nature to me. The lines between life and lies is too blurry to see. But please, don't be fooled by me. For God's sake, don't be fooled by me. I give you the impression that everything is okay, that I'm poised, secure, and that all is sunny and calm, inside and outside of me. That confidence is my name, coolness my game, that the water is calm and I'm in command and that I need no one. But don't believe me, please don't believe me. I'm drowning in the sea of pretending, kicking like hell beneath the surface of the water, just trying to survive. Sure, my surface may be smooth, but my surface is a mask, my ever-varying and ever-concealing mask. Beneath it dwells the real me, confused, lost, fearful, and lonely. Beneath lies my smugness, my complacency, my ugliness. But I cover this up. I do not, cannot, let anyone know. I panic at the thought of my weaknesses and fear of being exposed. That's why I frantically created these masks to hide behind. Nonchalant, sophisticated disguises to help me hide, to shield me from the glance that knows. But such a glance is precisely my freedom, my only freedom, and I know it. That is, if that glance of knowing is followed by acceptance and love and forgiveness. That's the only thing that can liberate me from myself, my masks, my self-erected prison walls and barriers that I so painstakingly built. It's the only thing that will assure me of what I cannot assure myself, that I really am worthwhile. This is the beginning of a poem called Don't Be Fooled by Me by Charles C. Finn and revised by Pastor Nate Bendorf. Our scripture today is from a letter written by the Apostle Paul to the Ephesian people. It's also the Lent scripture that we as the Church of Calvary are asked to memorize and to ponder. It starts out with Paul saying, I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. It's like Paul is begging these people to take their masks off. Paul is saying, I see you. I see the confused and lonely you. Please come out from behind that mask. Please come out and face our Lord. Be the worthy person that we know, that God knows, that I know you are and face the calling that God has given you. When you read this text in the original Greek, you see that it implies an urgency in Paul's message. It is like Paul is saying, do it now and mean it. God calls all of us with humility and gentleness. God calls us with patience and love. God calls us as individuals, but also as a unified group. We together are God's family. We together are God's church. As you know, we are now in the season of Lent, and our theme is unity. How can we as individuals come together as a community, as a family of God, despite our differences, and become a unified group? group of people in faith. A week ago, it was Ash Wednesday, the very first day of Lent, a time when we have ashes written on our foreheads in the sign of a cross to help us remember that we started out as dust, and someday, someday, we'll become dust once again. And the sign of the cross is a reminder to us that we are on the ground of Jesus' cross. Imagine standing there for a minute, the, d- the dust on your feet, right, below the dirt. Imagine looking up at the giant cross that is billowing overhead. 
Can you feel, feel the vulnerability? Can you feel the insecurity? Can you feel the need to be saved? Come, Jesus, come. Lent is a time in the church year where we are asked to take a personal look at our lives. Individually, we are to ask ourselves, how can we, how can I become closer to God? What path can I take to focus more attention on God? What do I need to do knowing I'm going to mess up again and again, knowing you're going to mess up again and again? What do we need to do to make sure that God is our first priority in our lives each and every day? Maybe you'll read a devotion every day. Maybe you'll read the Universal Christ book every day and reflect along with the New Calvary podcast and Zoom discussions. Maybe you'll give something up. There are endless ways to become closer to God. So take a moment and think about it. What is God calling you to do to get closer to to him? And I mean, really, why do we do this? Because God loves us. God cares for us. God believes that we are important. God knows that we all are worthy. And we are safe, safe when we are in God's arms. And we are safe when we are together in God's house. Our bishop here in the Northwest Minnesota Synod last week for Ash Wednesday had this beautiful message. His name is Bishop Bill Tesh. I'm going to read part of his message because I thought it was just beautiful. Our place of safety is our admission of vulnerability, our need for God, our solemn acquiescence to the reminder You are dust, and to dust you shall return. This is where we find common cause with one another. Here we have unity. We are, all of us, broken but beloved sinners, in daily need of the healing grace that we have through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now I will close with more of our opening poem. If you choose to, And I pray, oh God, that you choose to. You can help break down the walls behind which I tremble, the masks which I wear. You can encourage me to remove my masks and thus help release me from my shadowed world of panic and and uncertainty, from my lonely prison of doubt and fear. So do not pass me by. Please do not be fooled by me. It will not be easy. My sense of weakness and worthlessness has built strong walls of anger and envy. When you get close, I may strike back. I know it's irrational, but despite what they say about humans, I am irrational. I fight against the very things that I cry out for. But I am told that love is stronger than my walls and my masks, and that God's love always wins. So please don't be fooled by me. For who am I, you wonder? I am someone you know all too well. I am you. And I am me.
join me in our Lenten creed. We believe that our lives are held within the encircling love of God, who knows our names and recognizes our deepest needs. We believe that Christ is the divine child of the living God, and that his grace is like living waters that can never be exhausted. We believe in the birthing, renewing, enabling spirit of God who yearns over our welfare as a mother yearns for her child. We believe that God is in the arid desert as well as in green pastures, and that hard times and disciplines are also loving gifts. We believe that our journey has a purpose and a destination, and that our path leads to a human glory we cannot yet imagine. We believe that in the church, we are fellow pilgrims on the road, and that we are called to love one another as God loves us. This is our faith, and we are humbled to profound, we are humbled to profess in Jesus the Christ. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church those in need, and all of God's creation. God of all, we pray for the universal church, for your global ministry, and for the mission of the gospel. Father in heaven, the greatness of your love is beyond words to describe. By the power of your spirit, liberate us from all self-centeredness, that we may be free to love others as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of community, we pray for the well-being of all of your creation, for peace and justice in the world, and for the nations and all of those who, who are in authority. Lord God of hosts, make of us pilgrims throughout these 40 days. Lead us through discipline, lead us through discipline to discipleship, through fasting to feasting, through Privation to freedom, free us from our own struggles so that we may more fully serve one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yahweh, we pray for the poor, oppressed, sick, and lonely. Pull them close to you and provide them the comfort and care that they need. Loving master and faithful friend, help us to be obedient and joyful humble and caring, merciful and loving. Anchor us in your life-giving word and make us radiant for you, fitting ambassadors of your message of reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. We pray for the congregation and for all who we say silently or out loud now. God of all mercy, as we work together with Christ, help us to not accept your grace in vain, but to remember that now is the day of salvation and to call upon you and serve you as you desire. We ask these things in Jesus' glorious name. Amen. Please join me as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It was never promised that you will not be tempted not thrown into turmoil, not stumble or fail, but that by grace you will be saved through trusting God. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Grace is a free gift of God, gift, 
just ongoing gift for me, for you. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. You have a destiny to inherit over which the angels in heaven marvel, the quiet strength of Christ, the humble power of God, and the pervasive light of the Spirit is yours today and always. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.